All right, this is a video tutorial for the Big Ideas Geometry book for the text 5.1, Angles of Triangles. <clears throat> Two learning objectives are you can classify triangles by sides and angles, and you can find interior and exterior angle measures of triangles. <clears throat> so major core concept is looking at different types of triangles depending on the relationship of their sides and their angles. So just looking at the sides first, if a triangle has no sides that are congruent to each other, a triangle is called scalene. Um, if there are two sides that are congruent to each other, those are isosceles triangles. Think about isolating the one side that is um, by itself and not like the other two. And then three congruent sides, um, equilateral. EQ just means equal and then lateral is another word for sides. Um, so those are the three types of side relationship triangles. The angles, you have acute, so where there are three angles that are all less than 90 degrees. You have a right triangle, where you have one angle that is exactly 90 degrees. You have an obtuse triangle, where you have one angle that is exactly over 90 degrees. And then you have an equiangular triangle. Um, where it has three congruent angles. Um, any triangle that is equilateral is also equiangular. If you have all three sides are equal, then all of the angles are also going to be equal. So let's take a look through our first example um, using these kind of relationships and applying them to coordinate points um, when plotting out for your triangles. So you've got We've got a triangle here, um, OPQ, with the coordinate points 0, 0, negative 1, 2, and 6, 3. And we just need to determine if this is a right triangle. Well, the one characteristic about a right triangle is um, that there is one 90 degree angle in this right triangle. So we're going to need to use first for the distance formula to find the length of our OP. So we're gonna plug in our X and Y coordinates for O and P. Luckily with the zeros, it makes it a little bit easier because you're just finding the distance to negative one and two. Um, so you get your negative one and your two, you square those numbers to get one and four, add them together and you get the square root of five. And then you round that to the nearest tenth to get about 2.2. And we do the same thing for O and Q. Again, luckily with the O, the zeros make it a little bit easier for the six and three. So you end up with six squared plus three squared. Uh, six squared is 36, three squared is nine. You add this together to get 45 and the square root of that rounded to the nearest tenth is 6.7. Now the one that's gonna be a little bit more complicated just because again, there's no zeros, but using the same formula is PQ. So you have your six to the negative one and your three to the two, make sure that you're subtracting them. Um, you end up with seven squared and one squared. 49 plus one is 50. The square root of that is 7.1. So those are the lengths of all of the triangles. Um, because there are no sides that are congruent, notice how 2.2, 6.7, and 7.1 are all different. Um, you can classify this by the sides based on it being a scalene triangle. Okay, second step is to look for the right angles. Remember, we're checking if this is a right triangle, so we need to figure out if any of these form a 90 degree angle. So we're going to use our slope formula between all three sides to see if any of the slopes are perpendicular. So from O to P, you plug that into your slope formula to get a negative two. To get the slope of OQ, you plug those points into the slope formula to get one half. And to get your perpendicular slopes right there because they are opposite and reciprocal, negative two is negative, one half is positive and they are flipped. Then you can, pr you can prove that those two sides uh, are right, are perpendicular and it forms a right angle. All right, a couple different theorems we're gonna look over. Uh, the difference between interior and exterior angles. Um, in chapter three, we discussed the difference between um, angles that are inside the lines and angles that are on the outside. We're gonna continue with this, but focusing just on triangles. 
So when you have sides of a polygon where if the lines are extended all the way out past the vertices, there's some other angles that are formed. The interior ones are the linear pairs with the exterior angles. So notice how um, this red interior angle is a linear pair to this blue interior angle out here on the outside because they are connected by the same straight line um, and those are gonna be adding up to equal 180. Um, another one that hopefully all of you are still familiar with is that the sum of the measure of all interior angles of every triangle is always going to be 180 degrees. So you take angle A plus angle B plus angle C and it's always gonna be 180. Then moving on to exterior angles. Um, so the measure of one of your exterior angles is equal to the sum of the two non-adjacent interior angles. So notice how in this diagram, angle one is adjacent to angle C for your exterior. The two angles that it is not touching are A and B. You add A plus B together, and it's gonna be the exact same thing as one. Again, because remember, these are a linear pair. So angle C plus angle one is gonna equal 180. So that would mean that angle one plus these other two um, are gonna be equal to each other. <clears throat> All right, so using these alter alternate exterior angles um, to find uh, the measure of angle JKM, which is this angle measure right here on the outside. So first we're gonna have to uh, create an equation that allows us to solve for X. Uh, there are a couple different X's on here. Um, but we know that the exterior angles, if you take the one on the outside and set it equal to the total of these two, so 70 plus x is the same thing as 2x minus 5. Using algebra, you combine like terms, move your x's over to the left to get 3x. Um, actually, no, subtract x. My mistake, subtract x, 2x minus 1x is, is 1x, and then you add 5 over there to get 75. So that gives you your x. Then you just have to substitute the 75 into the x for 2 times 75 minus 5. And that will give you an angle measure of 145 degrees. All right, moving on. Acute angles of a right triangle are complementary. So this kind of uh, stems off of the fact that all three angles in a triangle add up to 180 and every right triangle has a 90 degree here. So the total of the other ones also have to be exactly 90. If all three are 180 and you take away 180 minus 90 from this one, you know you are left over with 90 combined in those two. And it could be a 45-45, it could be a 30-60, it could be any different arrangements, but those two have to be 90 in a right triangle. All right, this is the final example. So in this painting, um, the red triangle is a right triangle. So those, that angle is a uh, 90 degrees. The measure of one of the acute angles in the triangle is twice the measure of the other. So we just have to find the measure of each acute angle. So we know that one of them is 90. Um, that's the definition based on a right angle. And we know that the other two angles have to also add up to equal 90 as well. Um, but the relationship between those two is that one of them is twice the measure of the other. So we're going to have to just draw a diagram based on the situation that we're given in this example um, and determine what that relationship is between those two acute angles that are not 90 and uh, create an equation to find the measure of each of those. So that's what that triangle looks like. <clears throat> That's our drawing of the diagram. That lower right hand corner is 90 degrees, and we know that the other two add together to equal 90. <clears throat> but we don't know what each one is, so we're just going to set one of them equal to x, and we know the other one is twice that amount, so you say 2x is the other one. Well, because of the corollary, um, <clears throat> you know that these two acute angles are complementary, and you just add them up to 90 degrees. So you're gonna say that x plus 2x equals 90. Add those together to get 3x, divide by three, and you get x equals 30. So that is the given measurement of the smaller angle. 
And then you have to plug that back into your 2x to multiply by 2 to get 60. One thing you can check is if <clears throat> all three of these angles add together to 180, then this fits your triangle angle relationship. So you've got your 90, you've got your 30, you've got your 60, all of those add up to 180. So this fits a triangle angle sum theorem.